Hey, badass business owner. So you're thinking about starting a new business in your community and you're just not quite sure how to start that business and what you should be spending your time and energy on? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Now, I'm gonna assume that you have a business idea already in mind. Now, I do have other videos that are more specific to some businesses, but overall, almost every business is gonna follow a certain plan and a certain process that they need to go through and that's what this video is going to kind of go over. Now you need to make sure that you're finding a pain point because really ultimately that's what every business does. It solves a pain point for someone in the community. So what you want to make sure is whatever business idea you're kicking around that you have found a pain point and that you have a way to solve that pain point for your customers and be really in tune for what that is. It's going to help you out. Now let's take a look at the steps you need to take now to get your business off the ground. All right, the first thing you need to do is whatever business you have picked, you need to make sure that this is the right business for you. And the reason is because you're gonna be spending a lot of time doing it. And there are times when people start a business and they don't even really like the business that they did. And if you're not passionate about the business that you're gonna pick, it's gonna fail. 90% of the businesses that get started ultimately end up failing and over half of those in the very first year. And it's typically because it wasn't well thought out and they didn't do a lot of the steps that we're gonna talk about. But if you're not passionate about it in the beginning, you're already doing it. So make sure that you've done that. Now, the biggest thing that you need to do before you start any business is you need to do your research. This is by far the number one thing that you need to do. And the reason that you want to do your research is because it's ultimately going to save you time and money. Sure, you can dive right in and you can start your business. But guess what? It's going to cost you time and it's going to cost you money and it's going to cost you a lot of resources. Why not bypass a lot of that by doing your research first up front? and I think you're going to find that it's going to be way more successful for you. Now, there's four key areas that you're going to do your research in, and we're going to take a deeper dive into them. One is going to be your competition. Two is your legal requirements. Three is the money needs to get that business off the ground. And then finally, marketing. So let's take a closer look at each one. When it comes to researching your competition, you need to make sure that you find every single business that does what it is that you're doing. And it, it doesn't matter if they're small, if they're big, it doesn't matter. But what I want to do is you want to dive in and start jotting down. What is it that they do poorly? What is it that they're not really good at? It might be the quality of the products that they do. It might be they have really bad service. It's really easy to pick apart a business. So I'm sure you'll do fine on this one. But here's where most people struggle. You also need to write down what it is that they do really well. Like, do they have fantastic customer service? Do they do little things at the end of the day? Like, for example, after they do the job, they go through, clean up the whole area, and then walk the customer through to show them how well they did. Whatever it is. You need to know what they do poorly and what they do well, because ultimately you're trying to figure out how you can stand out in your business. And the only way that you can figure out how to stand out over your competition is to know what they do well and what they do poorly so that you can borrow the great and make sure that you improve on what they do poorly. You also want to look at the quality of the products and the services that they deliver, what, what types of things that they use. Uh, you want to make sure you look into pricing. What do they charge? Because some not all charges are the same. Just because it, the standard rate is 50 bucks, if there's something that you can do above and beyond uh, and you can get 60 bucks, then you should do that. Uh, you need to find out what it is that they charge and why. This is not a race to the bottom in pricing. Racing to the bottom does not make you money. All the sales in the world don't mean anything if you're not converting it into profits. And we talk about that a lot here on the channel because ultimately what it comes down to is we don't want you to just be another business that's out there doing what it is that you do. We need you to focus on that pain point because it's going to help you solve their problem and it's going to help you stand out amongst everybody else. And the best way to know that is to fully understand your competition. Now, next, we're going to jump into the legal requirements you need to be studying and researching. One is, are you going to be an LLC or doing business as otherwise known as a DBA? Keep in mind, an LLC is a legal entity within almost every single state. And a doing business is just doing business as, uh, you know, my name's Tammy, so it would be Tammy Adams doing business as whatever, uh, where the LLC is, this is the actual business all on its own. Now, I'm not a legal expert. You need to talk to legal experts within your own community to make sure what is the right one for you. But I will tell you, the vast majority of people start off as a DBA, and then eventually they become an LLC. But you can absolutely start with an LLC. Uh, each state will determine the requirements for your type of business, because some states require certain businesses to be an LLC, and some require them to, they can be do it as a DBA. So make sure you look at your particular state with what it is that you do. And ultimately, it does come down to a few uh, 
differences between the two, especially when it comes around protections and different things. Uh, this isn't the right video to go through all of this. Uh, some other legal requirements that you need to check out is going to be licensing, permits, insurance. Basically, check in with your city, your county, and your state. Don't forget all three of these because sometimes your city requires one thing, but the county doesn't, or the city might be okay with it, but the county says, nope, ain't going to happen. So make sure you, you look at all, all the different things required for your particular business because each business is going to be a little bit different. For example, if you have a food business, there's all kinds of things you have to do in majority of areas because of the safety for the people. You also need to look into the funds that you're needed to start your business. Every business is going to be different. You have different equipment needs. You'd have different vehicles if you need one, if it's going to be brick and mortar, advertising, licensing. There's different costs. There are businesses that need basically no money at all, like picking up dog poop uh, is pretty much just a scooper and you can go. And then there's really complicated ones like brick and mortars. If you're going to do a nail salon and stuff like that, a lot more uh, equipment is needed. So everybody's business is a little bit different. So you need to make sure that you, you thoroughly go through and create a list of all the money that you're going to need to get your business up and running and how much money you're going to need for the next six months to keep that business running. Most people fail and fall down because they don't do that piece. Now we need to make sure that you're getting paid. So it's really important that you look at how you're going to be invoicing your customers. If you're going to do bidding, how you're going to do that. Are you going to use an accountant? Are you going to do it yourself? Are you going to do it on a spreadsheet? Are you going to do it on online tool tools like QuickBooks, FreshBooks, stuff like that? How are you going to do that? At the end of the day, you want to get paid. So many small business owners do not get paid. And I know that sounds crazy, but they tell people they're going to build them. And then guess what? They don't build them for days or weeks and they forget that they did it. So it's really important you have a process in place and how you're going to take care of that. Uh, finally, you want to look at marketing and branding and how you're going to let people know you even exist because way too often people think that just because they start a business, people are going to come. That's not the way it works. You need to have a marketing plan. How are you going to get the word out that you solved this pain point that you've worked so hard on? Uh, you need to make sure that you have a goal of, are you going to go throughout the community? Are you going to tap into certain groups of people that want to do it? Do you already... Uh, are you going to go talk to real estate agents? What are, what are going to be the way that you're going to get your business out there? Everybody's going to have something different. Now, there are free ways to do this versus just paid. A lot of times people think of the paid ways. I'm telling you, you, most of you can get your business off the ground through the free. Word of mouth, Google business, make sure you claim your business on Google, on Bing. People get on Facebook, they start letting people know about it. it, it definitely realtors, 90% of the businesses that are out there can benefit from a handful of agents really promoting their business because they talk to customers all the time because they got people moving in, moving out, that typically will need a lot of people's services. Or if they're new to town, they're asking for recommendations from the realtor because that's who they know. Uh, networking, getting out there. Now, there are some paid ones that you can work your way to. Facebook ads, postcards, flyers, uh, you know, local papers. The good thing with being local and serving your local community, there's a lot of resources in your community. They want to help you get your business up and off the ground. You just got to kind of network and get to know those people and they can help you out. So, But make sure you have a plan of how you're going to get your business out there. And by the way, if you have to hire people for your business, you need to make sure you have a plan for that as well, because you want to make sure that you're hiring the best people and that you have a training onboarding plan of how you're going to get them aboard of your business, because you've got to have a way of how you're going to teach them, teach them about your business, teach them about what it is that you do and what your expectations are. You need to make sure you set up a payroll company if needed, because you may have to have an outside company that handles your payroll. Now, at the end of the day, you've done all this research and you're probably wondering, what do I do with it all? Well, once you get it all done, you need to work on putting a business plan together. You don't have to call it necessarily a business plan. Uh, most people, you use a business plan for uh, securing money, but for most of you, you need what I call a success blueprint. You need something in writing where you've taken all that information and you convert it into your plan of attack and how you're going to get the business going. Uh, once again, on the business plan, like I said, a traditional business plan is used to, to borrow money by a franchise. You don't need the traditional business plan, but you do still need that plan, as I was just saying, because you've got to put in place you know, what it is that you're going to do, what are going to be your first steps, how much money you're going to need. All, all that information needs to be captured in one place. And a success plan, business plan, whatever you want to call it, is going to be the best thing for you to be able to do that. Now, 
I'm going to pause right here for everybody. You need to, from the beginning, start learning and understanding your business numbers. Way too many people start a business and they don't have the first clue about business numbers. They just think that, oh, I just take in the sales and then I pay what I need to pay and then I put the money in my pocket. Well, yes and no. Ultimately, that's what most people do, but that doesn't make you a business owner. That makes you somebody who paid for a job and you're getting paid from the job that you're doing. Remember, you're building a business, not creating a job for yourself. So it's important you understand the flow of money through your business and where it all goes and how to save it and how to price correctly and how to look for trends and how to handle seasonality. And all of that is told through your business numbers. So you need to make sure that you understand your business numbers. You've got to understand pricing, market markdown, profit and loss statement. I mean, these are just a few of the things that are out there and there are tons of things. And by the way, if you follow the channel and you hit subscribe, we're always putting out videos that help you in all of your business numbers so you can make sure that you continue to get that stuff. You know, your profit and loss income statement is by far the number one thing you need to really understand because it tracks the money in and out of your business. It shows money coming in and then it goes out for cost of goods, for your expenses, and ultimately in your pocket for the profit. So you need to make sure that you really understand that. Remember, you are running a business, not creating a job for yourself. Way too many people think they're creating a job and that's not the case. You may call it, oh, I'm doing a business, I'm a business owner. Yeah, you might own a business, but really you've just created a job for yourself and given it a fancy name. That's not going to be you. You're going to do this the right way. And if you want to learn more about starting your business as well as running your business once you get it open, just continue to hit subscribe, continue to follow the videos that are out there. I'm putting them out there all the time to help you with that. Plus, I do have two courses to help you out. One is to start a small business, and it's going to walk you a deeper dive into all these areas that we've been talking about today, as well as some tools to help you with that. And then finally, I do have a course for knowing your business numbers to help get you off on the right foot from the very beginning. You can check that out as well. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit subscribe. Hit that like button more than anything to tell other people they should be checking out this video. It really, really does help. Now get out there and become the badass business owner that I know you want to be.